What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel again. If you're new here, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, I of course welcome you back. So today after work, I'm gonna be running some errands here. I figured it would be a great opportunity. I can go ahead and throw you guys a video together. So a lot of you might not know, but this is actually my third BMW that I'm on now, um, which is the F30. And throughout owning these cars, I've learned that there's some really awesome must have features, especially if this is gonna be your daily driver. So that's what today's video is gonna be about. It's gonna be my personal top five must have features to look out for when you're going to buy a BMW. Just to preface this video before you guys go destroy me in the comments, this would be a top five list of mine after you've decided what engine size you want, automatic, manual, you know, the actual setup of the internals of the car is not what I'm kind of going over. This is going to be mostly features, different packages, um, as well as uh, possibly some cosmetic stuff as I go through this. But just wanted to preface that before you guys destroy me saying I should have got a 340 instead of a 328. All that aside, this is just cosmetic and feature based. So the reason that I wanted to preface with that guys is because through the, the other two BMWs that I've owned, um, I mean, even this one included, none of them have been drastically fast. So this is necessarily pointing at performance. It's mostly going to be pointing at features and benefits because, you know, my first car was a 1996 E36 three series, which is a naturally aspirated inline six engine. Nothing drastically big about that. Same thing with my second car, it was a 2000 528i, also an inline six engine. And then this car, which of course is the N20, which is the inline four. Um, it does have a turbo, but uh, it's still, it's nothing drastically fast. So that's why I wanted these features to be, you know, kind of a side of those. I don't want to argue about which engine is, you know, better because I know people could go on for hours about that. So that's just really why I wanted to preface it with that. But this list that I'm going to go through is not in any particular order. I've just kind of pulled it together and these are kind of my top five. So for number one, I would say this is the one that I probably noticed the most is, especially if you're using this car as a daily driver, um, or I should say any BMW as a daily driver, is getting the upgraded sound system. So the Harman Kardon audio is what comes in the majority of the upgraded sound systems for BMWs. And in my first three series BMW, my E36, I had the Harman Kardon audio. Same thing with my 2000 528 E39. I had the Harman Kardon in that as well. Now, when I went to go buy this F30, I was like, you know what? I don't really know that I need it. It's not all that great. You know, maybe, maybe it's not even gonna be that big of a difference. That was a total lie. If you have that voice inside your head, literally throw it out the window because it's not true. The Harman Kardon audio system compared to the normal stereo system is completely a night and day difference. I love listening to music while I drive, especially on long trips because I daily drove this car for many, many years and I miss that speaker system. So I would absolutely put that um, in the list of my top five is make sure that you can get one with Harman Kardon audio, especially if you love music, it is a great upgraded sound system to have included. I would say probably two and three combined because they're along the same, uh, same subject matter. It has to do with the seats. So this particular BMW, my F30, is not a, it's not the sport model. So I don't have the sport seats and they're rather flat. Same case with my other two BMWs, my E36 and my E39, both had sport seats. I told myself, maybe it's not that big of a deal, maybe I won't need it. The seats in here are probably, I would say, close to the equivalent of how the sport seats were um, in my E39, so I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal. Also, wrong. The way that the sport seats in the F30 or in the newer model BMWs especially, really kind of grip with the bolsters and everything, it really does make a difference. So I would definitely put that in my top five get a car with, get a BMW with sport seats. It's a great feature to have. It makes the interior look so much more aggressive. And I think it honestly helps with resale. I think that it's a huge benefit that a lot of BMW owners would agree with. So look out for sport seats. 
The other feature does have to do with the seats, but it's a little bit of a different functionality. So, <laughs> as well with my previous two BMWs, I had fold down rear seats. And I think I took it for granted because when I got this F30 a couple years ago, I was of course daily driving and I just graduated from college and it was kind of my first big purchase when I got out and I had saved up for it for a while. When I got the car without the fold down seats and I was using it as a daily driver, I found myself running into, I felt like more instances than normal where I needed fold down seats, where I wanted that the little bit of extra room, whether I was you know, putting boxes or anything in the back that, that I needed more space. Now granted, these cars as well as the new BMWs in general, they do have a lot of rear trunk space. So for the average person, it may be enough. And I would say you could probably determine that just by going and looking at whatever BMW that you're looking at and determining whether you think that that's enough. But I will say that if you can find one with fold down rear seats, it always helps to have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. And I will tell you that I have needed it and not had it more times than I'm proud of. So I would say that that would be my number three when it comes to must-haves when you're looking for a BMW. So moving on to number four. So number four is something that I, I can actually say that I do have in the F30 and I wish I had it in my other BMWs. So this feature is the heads-up display, which I believe comes with the tech package. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong but the heads-up display with the navigation system is an amazing feature to have, especially in these newer BMWs. With it actually up on the windshield, posting my speed up there, as well as if you use the navigation feature, it will post your turn-by-turn -turn up on the windshield too. I find myself not even looking down at the speedometer. I feel like it's a more seamless driving experience. I get a exact digital reading of my speed versus using the tax, and I've honestly, fell in love with it so much, I do not think I will ever go back. So I definitely, definitely, definitely put that in my top five because I have absolutely loved the heads up display and anybody who has hung out with me knows it because I've mentioned it. It is absolutely awesome. So within the tech package, um, I was actually really surprised to find out, and this is moving on to number five, I was really surprised to find out it does not come included with a backup camera. And granted, this model is actually, this F30 is the 2012. It's one of the earlier models that they made. Um, it's actually the first year that they made this car. I was actually really surprised that it didn't have a backup camera. It was an option, so you could get it added on the car. Um, whoever, you know, of course bought this from the factory could have added it in there. But ultimately, it kind of just depended on which used BMW I was able to find, because of course I wasn't buying new. Now, I believe it's 2015, backup cameras do become standard. So this would be more of the E90, E92, early F30 models, probably the same thing with the 5 Series um, and the other models too, but I would definitely put that in the must have. While I can absolutely back up just like anybody else can, I found that using somebody else's car that had a backup camera and then going back to mine, I felt like it was so useful that I, I really honestly wish that I had it. So I would definitely put that as my number five must have I would put into when you're getting a BMW. Now if you're getting an older BMW um, like I had for my first two cars, you won't be able to find one most likely from the factory that way. But for example, with my E36, I installed a touchscreen head unit and then I actually wired my own backup camera and I loved it. So that kind of finishes out the top five must have features that I personally believe you should look out for when you're buying a BMW. Now I know everybody kind of has their own personal top five and I know that anyone could probably argue that some of the ones that I chose are not important or that there's ones that are more important, but that's just my personal top five. Feel free to throw your personal top five. Actually do that. Do it! Put your personal top five must have features down in the comments. I'd actually be interested to see what you guys think is uh, kind of must haves when we're buying these cars. But that does kind of top off my list. So if you guys are interested in this content, I would absolutely love for you guys to go down and hit that like button. It helps us show some support for the channel. Make sure you guys go down and hit the subscribe to look out for future content. Make sure you give me a follow on Instagram. I do have daily posts on there, so you can always check me out and start a conversation. But that does finish it out for today, guys. As always, I really appreciate you guys checking in, and I'll see you guys in the next one.